thing I did when I decided to, to be like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to leave my job uh -huh. and take a chance on this. If you're going to do that, you have to buy into the brand. You have to believe what the individual is offering on YouTube. The best part about it is that it can live there forever. And then my last reason for starting there is probably because it takes the most commitment. You know this, right? Like for you to do this podcast, it takes a real commitment to yeah. sit down with people and, and spend time. If you can commit to that, then you can very easily get what you need out of that to yeah. create your short form content on these other platforms. Justin Barry, how's it going, baby? <laughs> All good, man. How you doing? Excited to have you on the podcast. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Glad so to be here. So for people that don't know, Justin Barry is actually Ryan Pineda's producer. And you have been making him go viral for how long now? Almost three years. Three years. How many views or like what's the stats? So uh, last time I counted, I was at like 900 million views produced. He says it's over a billion, but you know, I'll yeah. take what I can get. <laughs> <laughs> You're close. Okay. So um, I wanted to have you on the podcast because I believe that people need to grow their personal brand in real estate. Yeah. You know, like for me, I've done millions of dollars as a real estate investor and as a realtor um, straight through social media, right? Like I actually never really invested a lot into like uh, mail or texting or cold calling. A lot of it was referral, referrals and social media. Yeah. So um, I guess like walk me through if someone wants to start growing their personal brand, uh, where do they start? Yeah, so, you know, and you mentioned in like how much you've been able to do through your social media. I think people need to understand that that is not like a rare thing, right? Like no. it's, it's not something that just you got lucky on or no. some of these individuals that we see doing that at a high level get lucky. No, it's, it, it can happen for anybody in the space. Um, it truly is just committing to, to making the content, right? Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, you know, to get started, one, you have to decide who's your avatar, right? Like, who are the individuals that I'm trying to reach? Mm -hmm. If you're an investor, who are my people? Who are the individuals that will invest with me? Because mm -hmm. that's the type of content that you want to create that would attract those type of individuals. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of mistakes that creators are making, and when I mean when I'm speaking, when I say creators, I'm talking about anybody that makes content. Mm -hmm. I think a, a big mistake that creators make is not understanding who they're trying to attract, mm -hmm. and whether you're in a real estate investor or an agent or in any of the real estate spaces. You got to understand that there are different avatars of individuals that yeah. you really should be trying to attract. Once yeah. you get that and understand yeah. what it is that you need to do to attract them, then it's just consistently creating it. Yeah. And the more eyeballs you get, the more opportunities you get. Yeah. So like for people listening to this, I think you should, if you're trying to flip houses, we'll say, create content for private money lenders and then wholesalers. Because yeah. wholesalers bring deals and then private money lenders bring the money. Yeah, you always have to put yourself as the creator in the position of the viewer mm -hmm. and of the individual that you're trying to attract, mm -hmm. right? And, and me and you have had talks, like I said, he, I, I do produce for Ryan Pineda, but I also help with every brand that yeah, you, comes you're through. Yeah, you're, you're my producer too, kind of. Yeah, no, yeah. He, he texted me this morning and gave me a new title, which is funny. <laughs> <laughs> right. This is like five o'clock this morning. He goes, you're technically just the director of media at Pineda Company. Yeah. And oh, I was so you like, got a you got promotion. I gotta, <laughs> so I was like, OK, I guess I guess that is the Everyone's actual going title. To Pineda. Yeah, yeah, we're all just going to be. But I understood it because I was like, yeah, I, I kind of do play a part in each, yeah. each brand. Yeah. But like we talked about before and the point that I was making was understanding that Brian has a specific individual that he's trying to hit that may be different from who Ryan's trying to hit on his yeah. pages. Yeah. That may be different from who I would hit on the Wealthy Creator podcast or in my content. Yeah. Totally different from Kingdom and business. And you know I mean like there's there's a, just a different individual that you're trying to to market to. Yeah. And so in understanding that you get to realize okay, what type of content does Brian specifically need to make to go along with his podcast to go along with his direct to camera filming. Yeah. What does he need to be saying and showing that will attract those individuals? Yeah. Yeah. And there's a lot of power in that, right? Like mm -hmm. individuals like Alex or Mosey because mm -hmm. of what he presents. Mm -hmm. He's still selling you. Oh yeah. 100%. Right. Like yeah. everything is branded. You yeah. know, everything has his brands on it. He speaks on it and tells you that he's not selling you, even though, you know what I mean? Like, it's understood what he's doing when you look at it, when you take a step back and actually look at the content. 
yeah. but it's valuable because of who he's attracting. Hundred percent. And so anybody yeah. can can generate that for themselves once they understand who that individual is. I don't know if I told you this. This is off topic, but I actually just paid Alex Hermosi six thousand dollars. Okay. Yesterday. Uh, going you know to that? the going to one of, I heard you on the phone with a rep I think it was or a yeah. sales yeah I didn't know yeah. what it was about though. yeah so we're actually going to his office and we're gonna spend two days there with his whole acquisition dot com team okay and then Layla and Alex are supposed to speak for like an hour each or something like that and we could ask some questions and stuff like that but yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. excited for that what is let me ask you a question <laughs> <laughs> what's your goal for that those two days at the end of it. What do you expect to get out of it? Well, one, it's an experience. So luckily I've made enough money. We make enough money where we can kind of just pay for stuff. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So number one, it's a good experience. Number two, um, on the education, I think I want to understand how his parent company works. Okay. I think it would help Ryan to kind of see like what exactly what roles do they have i think we know already what roles they have but what exactly do they do do they have like a cap on how many businesses like let's say a coo works with like i don't know if like the acquisition.com sales manager only works with five businesses and they have multiple like do you get right, what i'm saying right, like, right, try, yeah, yeah. trying to see how the parent company works um i want to learn how to scale a sales team that's mm. like our bottleneck right now is like sales members closers stuff like yeah. that um so if you're looking for a job send me a dm on instagram because we need sales people don't dm him dm me <laughs> yeah his dms are too full yeah. <laughs> but um but that that was like the number one thing sales like scaling the sales yeah. team and then um, seeing how the parent company works. And then, um, I mean, not much else, to be honest. I think, um, I mean, you never know. Like, you never know what we'll, what we'll learn. You know what I mean? But it just speaks to the leadership, right? Because the goal is to go in and you're almost acting as spy to someone that's doing it at a high level. Yeah. Right? And And to me, I always, like, I get excited for that because I know you all will come back with information that improves yeah. everything. Yeah. And most people don't get excited about it, by the mm-hmm. way, right? Mm-hmm. Because they know that either change is coming. Oh, yeah. Change or coming. there's going to be <laughs> a mix up of I've gotten so used to that that I'm like, yeah, like at, at, at the very least, it's going to make it better. Yeah. So the change may be rough for a little bit, but we'll get better from that. Yeah. And so I get excited when like we get the opportunities to to even just speak or especially to go visit these type of individuals that are doing it at a high level. Everybody listening, everybody watching should try to get themselves in rooms that will help yeah. improve their businesses. Yeah. And now that I'm actually thinking about it, I am going to ask him about branding because like the feedback that we always get on the coaching calls and from other people is like, oh, well, you know, should you just give so much value and not ask for anything to build up, you know, good faith and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. You know, like the whole Alex Hermosi thing yeah, yeah. where like I think we have a different philosophy here where we have to ask um, for sales or for recruiting. You might take on the Alex Hermosi, the whole thing, right? Like what I believe is that in order for us to continue to offer the value that we do to individuals, Yeah, it has to come with a cost. 100%. It can't all be given for free because yeah. in order for this train to keep running. We need money. Yeah, we need money. And yeah. so it's different in his case, whereas yeah. you can sell a company for millions of dollars. Yep. And he kind of has that freedom to be able to do that. Uh-huh. And I guess ultimately that is, you know, anyone in business's goal is to get, you know, to cash out on everything. Yeah. But until that point, there has to, there has to be things that come with a cost. Yeah. All right. And I still think he hides behind the, it's free and you know, it's a sneaky way of selling you on something. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, um, for, for me as a business owner, I don't care. I don't care for free stuff. I want paid stuff because I want the best stuff and I want to make sure that, um, like with this workshop, there's only 50 people. Mm-hmm. If it was free and there was a thousand people there, like will the networking and information be great? Sure, but the smaller the room, the better. Yeah. Um, and another part that I'm excited about is the networking because you never know who you're gonna meet at these little workshops or, or events. And those relationships can like 
change your life. So I'm actually really excited about it. Now that I think about it. No, for sure. We might not get Brian back after yeah, this. Yeah, uh, I might freaking start <laughs> another business <laughs> yeah. and try to sell it. You know, I mean, it's the rooms, man. Like, even for me personally, like, and when, yeah. we, when we talk personal branding, yeah. 2023 was a year for me to actually step out from behind the camera. Yeah. Right. And so I've I've begun the journey of actually personally branding myself. Yeah. As a, you know, a creator in the space myself. Being yeah. behind the lens was was way more comfortable. Right. Yeah. And I enjoyed it. I still enjoy it. Right. Because you're you're as people watching people grow was a, a good feeling for me. Like seeing that success. Being in front of the camera feels really similar. Mm -hmm. But it still is different because no one's going to care about it more than you when you're creating. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Right? And so I care more. I care. I give. The care for it isn't more, but it is like you can feel it, right? Yeah. Directly. And so it's been a it's been an interesting year. But I, I say that because that has put me in different conversations in different rooms. Mm. And that's what's been the biggest change from 2022 to 2023. Mm. Um, you know, going and traveling with ryan everywhere and all of a sudden everybody's like actually recognizing you not as just the videographer or not yeah. as now you're being more recognized for what you're doing outside people didn't know i coached people didn't yeah. know that all the other stuff that we yeah. have going on now they're starting to see that and they're hearing me talk about it and they're hearing other people talk about it yeah and so it's a different conversation now there's a different respect on 100%. on the art itself and so it's been it's been yeah. an interesting thing and i think everybody has that capability of finding that yeah right so let's let's get into brand building gotcha so let's say someone's listening to this and they're like okay like i understand i gotta pick an audience and all that stuff and um you know i understand i need to make content like what are the first steps that they need to do yeah so the, i mean the, the first step truly is to do research right okay go research. by research what i'm referring to is go find your competitors and go look through their content and figure out what they're doing that's working and what they're doing that can fall into kind of your lane and that you're trying the direction you're trying to go in right because one thing about content creation is you don't we know what works yeah so you don't have to keep reinventing and get extremely creative on how you create content so you're saying everyone should go out and copy someone else uh, the word copy I don't use okay right because I don't I don't believe in mimicking other individuals creativity one, you'll never be as good as that creator. Yeah. Right? Like, I see it all the time where people are doing the Ryan Pineda hands when they're talking, or the podcast starts the exact same way his starts and mm -hmm. ends the kind. Like, I see all that all the time, and yeah. it just it feels unauthentic. You got to be right. authentic to who you are, mm -hmm. but you should draw influence from what other people are doing. Yeah. Right? So, for me, a good example, I, when I do my podcast, there's individuals that I watch that I'm like, okay, I like how he asks that question. Yeah. How could I ask a similar question to a guest and relate it to what my audience would want to see? Got it. Right. I'm not mimicking, but I am pulling inspiration from what other people are doing. Yeah. And so I noticed that in doing that, it still works. So when that that question was cut into a short and answered on my it did just as good as it would that I expected it to because I saw how good it did for another creator. Got it. Uh, and that's what I mean. So doing research in that aspect where you're kind of researching your competitors is one way of starting and, and being prepared. The other way is figuring out what is going to make you different and separate you from other individuals that are in your lane. Mm -hmm. All right. And so that you that that gets tricky too because yeah. you're like, I'm real I'm a real estate investor. We're all doing the same things. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. We're all using the same strategies. We've all read the same books. I know. We're quoting the same person over yeah. and over yeah. again, right? But there is something unique about you in the way that your mind kind of functions and runs through the the information mm -hmm. that you just have to expose to your audience. Yeah. Um, one thing me and you talked about, you know, at the end of the year is like, I need you to be more vulnerable with your content. Yeah. Which yeah, means yeah. I need to hear more about your experiences outside of just your niche. I know. Yeah, right. very like niche. Yeah, super yeah. niche. I'm right. Super niche, yeah. So so individuals and and to me, part of that is when you do get vulnerable, you grow authority, you yeah. grow trust. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. People actually get to know Brian yeah. and not Brian Devilla, the real estate investor. I know. Right. And so, in doing that, you'll start to find ways, and that's that is the unique part. Right. Like you have a story. There's something unique that people can relate to. You just haven't told it. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think for me. 
the struggle that I've had with being more vulnerable and I used to, and then I feel like I started going more for views and mm -hmm. then I got more views. So I was like, frick it. I'm going to just do this. Yeah. Got, but, addicted, um, got addicted to the views. Yeah. I got addicted to the views, but I think I want to start to be more vulnerable, but I also sometimes think like, why would anyone care? And do I even want to share stuff about my family or faith yeah. or thoughts on things or stuff like that. Well, let me ask you a question. Who's the biggest creep? The, let me see, who's your, who would you say is the best marketer? Alex like, or Mosey. Alex or Mosey. Outside of your niche though, who would you say is the best, like can market the best? And I'm going to get to Alex too, but I want to make this point. Okay. Outside of my niche? Yeah, just overall in general. There's like five marketers that you can name in the world. That are like oh in the world. Just I'll say Donald Trump. Okay. Donald Trump for sure. Uh, Jesus. Okay. I you consider him a marketer. Hey man. Hey, he's been around a long time. <laughs> Biggest like brand you're saying? <laughs> yeah. I would say Jesus, Donald Trump, which is wild to say. Those put those in, <laughs> put putting those two names together <laughs> yeah, is crazy. Yeah. But okay. Uh Mickey Mouse. Okay. The uh, mouse. Uh, Ronald McDonald. Yeah. Um. Grant Cardone. That's it. That's all. Okay. That's all I got. So you name you name some individuals, uh -huh. and then you name some corporations. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Let's talk about the individuals. Okay. To me, uh -huh. the individual who it, that started creating content and started understanding what it meant to to create content and market the best to ever do it uh -huh. has one name that just well, every no nobody doesn't know that everybody knows his name, bro. Like everybody, uh -huh. the Kardashians. Oh, really? I thought you were going to say Jesus. <laughs> the Kardashians. I want you to think yeah, about this. Yeah, I guess Jesus didn't create content. So I want that makes you, sense. So think about it. Think about it. Kim started it. Mm -hmm. And now every member of the family mm -hmm. has benefited from that. 100%. Right? Whether the name is Kardashian or Jenner, it don't matter yeah. at this point. Extended family now has, yeah, 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 has yeah. begun to benefit from it. One thing that they did that really kind of sold everybody on it, because Truthfully, I don't I don't hear people talk about how great their products are. You never hear yeah. you're married. Your wife has never gone. This is just the best product I've ever had. From Actually, my wife does like Skims. My wife loves Skims. Yeah, but they, it's never like this is the best thing I've ever gotten. Yeah, they still go out and buy some of the same type of products from other people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. I don't and know so, what she buys, but she buys it a lot. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> I just Skims is a thing in yeah. my house. Skims is a thing. I probably have Skims underwear, right? Yeah, yeah. Let me see. I do. Yeah, see? Yeah, look, I do. I actually do. See, how do you my feel about it? it? I mean, they're soft. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but but my point my point to that is the name uh -huh. is what did it. The reason why it got so much recognition is because you got to see their entire life play out on TV. Mm. And over and oh, okay, over again. Okay, that's a good point. Yeah, I didn't know where you were going with that. Over and over lost. again. I mean, think about it, right? Like, they for years. Yeah. And the majority of it is the same storylines. Yeah. Right. It's just it's drama. Like fight, yeah. yeah it's, they, it's just drama. But you got to see them vulnerable. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. The Kim Kardashian crying face is a meme. It's an emoji. It's everything. Like this is deep, actually, because like, I, I think I needed this. They I, branded themselves off of just showing you their lives. Yeah. 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 Right. Now let's move on to Alex and Mosey since you brought Alex and Mosey up. Yeah. One thing I saw them do this year is talk more about their personal relationship. Yeah, 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 I saw yeah. videos come out of them just walking down the sidewalk talking about their marriage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw Layla get really vulnerable and talk about her look and her mm -hmm. voice and all mm -hmm. this. It was an amazing video she did about it, right? Like mm -hmm. about like, you know, somebody who has all of this success still has insecurities. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, but that exposure is more relatable than him selling for a hundred and something million dollars. 100%. Right? Not many people can relate to that part. No. A lot of people can relate to the insecurities, to the to the vulnerable, to the marriage issues, to loving your your spouse. So there's a lot of people that can relate to that. And so what happens is someone who may not be interested at all in what they do as a profession just became a fan on another level. Yeah. And that means they'll pay six grand to come sit with them for two days, mm -hmm. right? And now you start to realize revenue gen is generated because of the likeness, not just what you have to offer, right? I, I seriously, there's a good portion of even the wealthy audience and Ryan Pineda audience that I believe are there out for other reasons outside of real estate. 
Oh, yeah, 100%. I mean, when he got bold with his faith, we saw it, right? Like, a yeah. lot of people came in because yeah. of his statements and his boldness and faith, right? And yeah. that is just him getting vulnerable and showing other aspects of his life, Yeah. right? And so I, I think everybody should begin in this next season to to experience that, right? Like, just tell a story. Like, yeah. And that that separates you. Right mm-hmm. from the individual that's doing the exact same thing. Yeah, there's a lot of people online that talk content and teach it and are experts at it, way better than I am. Mm-hmm. I think what I have, you know, to my benefit are my experiences of the past mm-hmm. and the things that I've learned standing next to a Ryan Pineda in the rooms and the conversations I get to hear. Yeah, right. Like I get to learn a lot of things about content faster than everybody else. 100%. One, because Ryan isn't afraid to try anything. Yeah. But two, everybody that comes in here, I get to hear that full conversation. The conversation that you don't get to hear on mic, the conversation that you don't get to hear. Like, I'm sitting next to him when he's on the phone with uh, Am I Let. Yeah. Right? And, I, and he's talking about some of the things he's like, – I get to hear all of that. And so in knowing that information, I could begin to see things a little bit sooner than most. Yeah. All right? Where everybody yeah. else is trying behind the wave. Yeah. So, yeah, let's transition to social media trends. Mm-hmm. So right now it's 2024 when this is coming out. Um, what trends are you seeing work in social media right now? Uh, obviously, the the anytime you're using, you know, a well-known or something that's popping off in terms of music, it will always get you views. Music. So, like for example, if I pick a, a instrumental that is being trendy right now that goes with some dance, mm-hmm. it doesn't matter what I'm doing on my video. Mm. The platform is gonna push that that music, right? Like because oh, okay. one, it has to do with the music industry and the streams and every like this is all a, a thing, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so if you can figure out how to use that audio, right, whatever the audio is, whatever's trending. You can really you can figure out how to use that to have impact on the actual video. If you can pair those two together well, if you can pair those two together well, mm-hmm. you'll see that like it'll have a, get a, a further push on on what you're trying to do on your video. Because I I I, I still don't that. I still don't focus on views all the time, all right? And you I mentioned do. it a little bit about yeah. like getting addicted to the view, yeah. Um, because I'm not I'm not as focused on the image. Right. To me, what's more important is that people come in and get into our programs and our communities. Mm-hmm. Right. It's not important for me to think I, I need every video to go viral. Yeah. Right. I could make you viral. Make you might viral, Chris. You can do some things yeah. that will make you viral, but it have no impact on your business. Yeah. I understand. And so when it comes to trends, you gotta be careful because there's a line there that you have to know. Right. So like I remember last year I was trying to get Ryan to do the remember the hot chip challenge? Yeah. Right, we bought a bunch of them from the gas station and was trying to get him to get a part of that trend because it was blowing up. Like, I mean, yeah. it was crazy. It wasn't even good videos of people doing it. It wasn't even funny. It wasn't like there's nothing to them. They were just mm-hmm. eating the chip and it was getting millions of views. So I'm like, I could use a million views right now. We down a little bit this yeah, month, yeah, yeah. right? And he just never would do it. Mm. And then I understood like it didn't it didn't mean anything. Yeah, right. It wouldn't have done anything for his business. So it was like, why would he do it? Yeah. But then I was like, man, you could talk about how they're selling one chip for twenty dollars, and that's biz- like that's business, right? That's yeah, marketing. Yeah. So I was trying to find a way to finagle and twist it to where it made more sense to his brand. Yeah, I think if he would have done it, it still would have did well, mm-hmm. right? Because we did stuff about Costco, we did stuff about, and it did well. Yeah. So you know, like there's ways of kind of you, you know getting creative with how you can implement those trends. Mm-hmm. But as far as the 2024, I don't think trends are going to be. I think trends are going to stay consistently the same. Like mm. if, uh, you know, whatever is happening, the newest dance, the newest yeah. music, whatever's happening, that's still going to do well. Yeah. Right. And so you should implement those and take advantage of those when you can. Yeah. Um, but I do think. So you should try to hit the trends. When yeah. Going. Especially if you're just starting. Got it. Um, because you're, you're, you're right now you're just trying to grow. You're trying to get views and get eyeballs on yeah. your brand. And so do what you have to to get to that point. Yeah. Um, but you still need to implement other. It shouldn't just be all trend videos. Got it. Still implement and sprinkle in other aspects. Direct the camera stuff about your business. The show and tell type of videos where you're walking your flip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Um, implement the vulnerability stuff. Like talk about your faith. Talk yeah. about your family. Right? There's all these things that you can implement. So every video shouldn't just come out as me dancing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Or me doing. You know what I mean? Like it should be 
all of that. Uh, the the greatest you know creators that do it do all of it. Yeah, right. They show you all of that. Like if you, yeah. even if you like like the Paul brothers. Yeah. I get to see one image of him and his girlfriend. Mm -hmm. I get to see the next one of him in the gym boxing. Mm -hmm. And the next one, he might be talking crazy to one of his opponents. And you know what I mean? Like oh, these are okay. all, it's a mix of his, like his branding all in one, but he's hitting each mark on, yeah. on all those things. You're actually really good at social media. Cause I literally <laughs> never think about the Paul <laughs> brothers or the Kardashians or yeah. any of that stuff. So that's very interesting. <laughs> So if someone had to pick one platform to post on, which one do you think they should do? Um, my number one platform is still always going to be YouTube. Really? Yeah. I thought Instagram. So that's one and two. They one A, one B. You can flip them out however you want to. Yeah. But if I'm going to encourage anybody that's just starting, I would encourage them to start with YouTube. Really? So let me give you the reasons why. Wow. One, YouTube's never leaving us. It's gonna always be around. It's gonna exactly. always. Be, it's always gonna have impact. It's the one platform that pays its creators, uh -huh. right? But it's also, and, and I, when I say pay, the other ones do it, but not really, yeah. right? Like this one actually does do it. Mm -hmm. um, it's also the platform that is not coming out of a fund, right? So you look at Instagram, you look at TikTok. A lot of those, a lot of their payouts are coming just from a fund created. These are coming from ad dollars, which means that these companies and these corporations and all these they're always going to be trying to spin with youtube to run ads mm -hmm. which means that the platform is going to be very difficult to kind of like overtake really right it's you know so and that's and that's why i think i also think that when you post on youtube mm -hmm. the best part about it is that it can live there forever okay right so a channel that you go unactive in for however long right it's inactive for let's say a year we have a channel like that the wealthy way channel hasn't been touched in a year <clears throat> Right, it made twenty k this year. Oh, okay, haven't touched it. It's like a rental property. Exactly, it's mm -hmm. digital real estate for real. Right, mm -hmm. like that's exactly what it is, and so I still think it has the most impact. The other piece is the time spent. Right, think about how long it takes. Like we're we're doing an episode right now, maybe an hour to two hours long. Think about how much time it takes for you to go on my Instagram and intake content to get to two hours, mm -hmm. whereas you can watch one video with me. Yeah, and sit with me for yeah. however long the video is ran. Mm -hmm. And so as a you know, as someone in business, it's more powerful than just your my 30 to 60 second reel. That's amazing. And that's why I think like people should start there. Uh and then my last reason for starting there is probably because I think it's it takes the most commitment. Mm -hmm. You know this, right? Like for you to do this podcast, it takes a real commitment to yeah. sit down with people and, and spend time. Yeah. And even to film, a, like if you were filming YouTube videos, you know yeah. how it was, right? To script yeah. it. It's hard. To, it's, it's a hard thing to do, right? Yeah. And it takes real commitment to do it. Yeah. If you can commit to that, then you can very easily get what you need out of that to yeah. create your short form content on these other platforms. Got it. So if you start there, you've already accomplished the hard part. Got it. It's super interesting that you said YouTube because I thought you were, you were going to say... Instagram. Instagram or TikTok. Yeah. Is TikTok dying right now? No, TikTok's not dying. Um, TikTok is still the easiest place to grow fast to me. Really? Yeah. Um, because there's I have no the whole game messed up. <laughs> <laughs> so with, with, so TikTok has always been a place where it isn't TikTok sends me everything. Okay. Right? Instagram kind of caters what they're feeding me. Okay. Right. Especially when they started running ads and you see like now you see like these ads that come up like every so often I'm scrolling and there's a Ryan Pineda thing. And I'm like, oh, he's hitting my because he's because I'm a part of the network. He's hitting me at, at, for an ad. Mm -hmm. And it's not a post from him. It's a real ad that's yeah, being paid out. Yeah. When they started doing that, I started to see like sometimes I'm getting videos from four days ago. It's not like timeline where what you're posting now is what I'm seeing. Which one is Instagram? Instagram's not Instagram. Like Instagram, yeah. So yeah. they're they're feeding me what they want me to see and what they think I want to see, mm -hmm. right? So if I like a watch, my entire explore page is oh, all yeah. watches, yeah, hundred percent, right? Because they think that's what I want to see, and yeah. the potential of that is because they can sell me an ad and and try to get me sold on something, yeah, buying through the platform, right? The difference in TikTok though is that. You see everything. I know, you see old One stuff. second, I got a, a snake biting a guy's nose. The next second, I got Ryan Pineda teaching me real estate. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. It's all over the place. So if you do enough of that type of content, you're going to get seen. Mm. Right? And it gives you a greater probability of growing. Mm -hmm. 
that's why people's if you usually look people's numbers are higher on tiktok for the most part um if they started a couple years ago they're definitely yeah. higher on tiktok than they are on instagram yeah but i feel like the views are down right now yeah I mean, they're, they're down because the craze has kind of faded Right, and it's like you know how it goes. Like, yeah, so a lot of hype. The United right States now. did a really good job of kind of dying yeah. down that craze of yeah. another country's yeah. platform, right? Got it. So you know that that was all a part of that, and I don't want to get deep into that, but that's that's how that worked. So TikTok and Instagram are still great. Like, it's still like, and to me, if you're posting on one, you should just post on the other. Like, it just makes sense. Yeah. Um, and again, you start with YouTube. Like, you make a YouTube video. Like, I don't know how many clips we're going to get out of this conversation. But all these clips are not only going to go on YouTube, but they're going to be used in Instagram and eventually TikTok. Yeah. And so again, if you tackle YouTube, you kind of you kind of starting at the top of that funnel, and it's just going to funnel into the rest of the platforms. Got it. So yeah, I think I, I've been doing social media completely wrong. I've been doing Instagram, not TikTok, not YouTube. I you know been doing this podcast, but. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, I think you're making me reevaluate like what I want to do as far as like social media and content creation. Yeah, and I mean, even for you, like what you're doing now, you don't have to necessarily change your scheduling or your output. Yeah. You're already doing it. Uh -huh. It's just how it's being put and directed. Yeah. Right. So like right now, you make specific content for Instagram. Mm hmm. But that Insta that content isn't shared to the other platforms. Hundred percent. Once you start sharing to the other platforms, yeah, along with the vulnerability pieces, along with the organic reels of just your day to day, yeah, then you'll start to see like, okay, this I, I'm not doing anything different. Yeah, it's really just me exposing every platform to the pieces that I'm creating. What about what what apps do you think every content creator should be using? That's a good question. Um, and so that, that question, that the answer to this is going to depend on where you're at in your journey. Yeah. Um, but if, let's say you, you're putting out content and you're like a solo creator. Yeah. yeah you yeah. don't have a team or any of that kind of yeah. stuff. Uh, the number one, I would say Canva, okay. believe it or not. I've never uh, used Canva. I've heard of it. But. Yeah. So what <laughs> Canva is kind of like, it's the cheat code to digital, like, how do I describe this? Canva is the is the cheat code for individuals that don't have a graphic designer. Okay, so it helps you like graphic design. Yep. So everything that we used to do in Photoshop that would take us hours to do, mm -hmm. I can do in Canva in five minutes. Okay, I got to get so Canva. Like, I've I've literally been at WealthCon right before somebody has to go on stage and they want to throw up a QR code or something like that and create it right there. Mm. Right, like that's how fast I can move through Canva. Canva. Right, and it's not like I'm doing it because I've have the I have the experience. Anybody can do it. Yeah. All right. It's literally plug and play on everything. Got it. And so, um, I would do that. And then if you are again solopreneur and kind of at that early level, you want to get CapCut. CapCut. So CapCut is the video editing software. I think I've used that one. So CapCut will allow you to put your captions on. And as you dig deeper into the, mm, to you the, can put captions on there. Yeah. Is it easy to do? Yeah. Hmm. Click of a button. Click of a button. It transcribes your video, throws your captions on, right, Got and stuff it. like this. Now, it's funny because, like, me saying this can, like, put people out of a job. but Put them out. <laughs> but, the, <laughs> but I always say, too, like, it's it's going to be basic level stuff. Yeah, you you want to get great. a real editor if yeah, you're you trying to do it at high editor, level. <laughs> yeah. But for people who are just, like, starting and they just want to get stuff That's out it. there. It's that easy. Got Those it. two things are, like... You got professional level, and then they're right beneath that on yeah. on what you need to create because they they made it they made the interface and the software really easy for an individual that has no experience in that field yeah. to do. What about is there any other apps you think? And I mean, if you're doing short form content, to me, you don't even have to really do the editing in another you know software or another platform. Just use Instagram captions, use TikTok's captions, right? Like start oh, okay. there, right? But I know people are gonna want the cool looking ones. Yeah, if you want the, the cool, then, then go to the cap cuts and the the end cap shots cut and and all things. Yeah, I mean, cap cut has a lot of tools that people don't don't know about. Yeah. In fact, coming this year, one of our editors is going to release 
um, a, a quick little mini course on how to use it. Oh, okay. And so it's going to be a good product for Who's people to kind of. Spencer is going to do Ish. that. Okay. Yeah, he's he's been working right, on Spencer. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There Shout out go. to him. But he's gonna he's gonna release it so that individuals could kind of see how he takes his work his kind of like 60 percent done work yeah and puts it into a cap cut where people can do it really quickly so mm. it's gonna be pretty it's gonna be pretty awesome for people to use um but yeah so i think those 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 two alone will get you further than wherever you're at at the starter level um and what makes it really easy services or posting apps so posting apps i got I, you know i'm gonna love hate with some of those one let me say this instagram youtube can schedule so you don't necessarily need a posting app. You just need to upload and schedule everything. I didn't even know they did that. Yeah, they, that's a new feature. Uh, well, a new newer feature for Instagram. Yeah. Um, but I don't, I don't like the third party apps. So like, mm -hmm. there's some apps that yeah, you can schedule out a month, but it's a third party connected to your your platform, your Instagram or your you, and those tend to hurt you more than it helps. Sure, it helps you because it saves you time and you're not posting every day like, you know, but it does hurt. I, I believe it hurts the impressions. It hurts the reach because the platform itself, like an Instagram or a TikTok, just wants you to stay on there. Yeah. So if you're posting on another platform, you're spending an hour or two uploading everything that you want for the month on another platform, you're not yeah. giving the time to yeah. to Instagram. And I think that's why it tends to hurt the the views, the reach, impressions, all of that. Got it. What else do you think is important for social media to cover? Uh, I think people just got to understand that this the the future of social media is going to be determined by who can communicate well and who can't. Mm. Um, I predicted that's been my prediction all of twenty twenty three, and I believe it's going to start showing here in the first quarter of twenty twenty four, where especially for entrepreneurs and business owners, if you are your brand, mm -hmm. right, and you are not a top communicator mm -hmm. where you're not delivering your message well enough for people to either find you, become a fan of you, like mm -hmm. you or trust you. Mm -hmm. If 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 that's if if that's you and you're not doing that, you're yeah. gonna see separation from people that are in your field and doing it correctly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that's gonna be all of twenty twenty four. Yeah. Um if you notice everybody's creating their podcast and they're putting out consistently you know, consistent episodes um they're getting great collaborations from meeting people during their podcast sessions yeah. and things like that like and it's because of their communication yeah right um the people that you trust at the highest of levels right mm -hmm. you, you've mentioned some of them during this episode they can communicate really well yeah they can right and a lot of that is just repetition yeah right these these individuals that we're talking about that are doing at a high level they didn't just start making content this year yeah they've been doing it for a while but they started yeah. And so everybody needs to get going on that and learn from from all of that and really understand that, okay, I may not be the best communicator here in 2024, yeah. but if I do rep, get my reps in all of 2024, yeah. I'm going to be way better next year. And yeah. then I'm going to start surpassing people who haven't done it. I'm going to start surpassing people that who are doing it and are not taking it serious. Really learning. Like I, I read several books this 2023 about just storytelling. Mm. Because I wanted to master my story because I knew I was getting in front of a camera. Yeah. And I knew that every time that I told my story better, people will tend to gravitate towards it. Mm -hmm. Right. And so now I'm, my communication has grown. Everything has grown at that level. I just got to keep building upon that. Yeah. But it's just reps. Right. Yeah. It's just getting it in. The first ones are going to suck. Right. Yeah. We always say your first videos are your worst videos. Yeah. You're going to look back at it like, oh, why did I talk like that? Why did I say that? Yeah. Right. But a year from now. And you've done 300 videos, you're gonna see a Way big better. difference, right? Yeah. Like you know this, right? Yeah. You've you've done it. I I, I mean, I remember <laughs> watching your raw versions of videos, mm -hmm. right? And being like, oh man, it's taking him forever. Yeah. Right. Hey, you know that. Like Ryan was the same way when I first started with Ryan. A video that we would cut down to 12 minutes would take 45 minutes to film. Damn. Right. Because yeah. of, and now he could go film a, a 12 minute video yeah. in 12 minutes. Yeah. Right, one take it through all the way through. It's because of how many videos he's done and, yeah. and recorded. Yeah. Right. There's times where we have to say, "Hold on, we need you to to read the script because yeah. he's so good at just sitting down and doing it." Mm -hmm. Right. And so it's that's that's how it goes. Like you get better. It's just a muscle. You know, you got to work it. Yeah. So I want to transition to business, but I want to talk about Ryan Pineda. Okay. Because you've been around him for a few years now. You've seen the rise of his 
social media game. Yeah. Like, talk to me about, I guess, like that whole the whole career that you've watched over the past few years. Like, where did it start? What were some of the struggles? What were some of the wins? And then all that. Yeah. I mean, Ryan's interesting, right? And, yeah. you know, he's a he's one of the most intelligent people I've ever been around. Yeah. Like, truthfully, like, mm-hmm. there's some genius to what... Oh, yeah, I would say he's a genius. Yeah, the sure. way he, the way his yeah. mind works and the way he's able to accomplish things and get things done, um, really, it's a lot of problem solving. Um, yeah. That's a real gift of his. Yeah. And, and so seeing him do, you know, these three years has been really amazing on from my viewpoint. Um, there's been headaches, right? Like yeah. anything, there's been, you know, a lot of trial that, you know, every so often I'm getting yelled at about something, Yeah. which I don't mind it because I know it's making me better. Yeah. 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 Right. And I understand that. Um, but I also, I'm also not the type to not tell him when I think he's wrong too. Yeah. So we'll do that. Like we have that, we got a good enough friendship and understanding that I care about it too, that we can do that with each other. Yeah. And so the relationship has grown tremendously. Even just last year, the, the relationship has grown tremendously. Um, but what I mean by, you know, some some of his genius when it comes to problem solving is I've watched him come up, like have an idea, mm-hmm. right? Implement things on the idea. Mm-hmm. And in 30 days, it's a business with a brand, a logo oh, and yeah, everything 100%. else, right? Yeah, yeah, I've seen and that. then I've watched it where, you know, six months, it's it's profitable. Yeah. Right, which doesn't happen. Like you know what I mean. Like that's yeah. not a normal thing for no. create entrepreneurs, right? Like no. it takes time to yeah. build. Right, I've watched him be able to do it. Um, one of the most you know things that I respect most about him is that he's never not learning. Mm-hmm. Right, sometimes to a fault, sometimes, but he's never not learning. He's always trying to suck information from places that he knows are either doing it at a higher level or have new ways and, and creative ways of, of getting accomplished what he wants to. Yeah. Uh, and what I mean by to a fault is like sometimes we don't give things enough time to make sure it works. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, so like that that happens, but that kind of goes with it, right? Yeah. Like I think that's a part of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's it's really incredible to see him calculate. Like there's, uh, there's months or let's say six to seven months where he's not really active in the business. He's more focused on the branding and pushing. And so he's on our end. He's on the content side of things. Yeah, We're doing a lot of different types of content. We're trying new things with the content. It's really what he enjoys doing, right? Like he enjoys mm-hmm. creating, right? And it's where he can get out that kind of bug of creativity. Um, and then there'll be another six months where he's actively in the business. Yeah. Right. And so now I don't see him as much maybe. Yeah. Or we I don't get to do really what I want to do on the creative side of uh-huh. things. But I know that that's necessary. Right. And so watching him navigate through that, like knowing exactly when to turn it on. Like, okay, I got to get back into business now. I got to mm-hmm. I got to help this area. Right. Let me yeah. show him how to do it. That's his big thing. Right? I'm yeah. going to show him watch. Now that the boss is back in, I'm going to show him how to do it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but where did you start with him? So I came in as just the podcast editor. Oh, really? Just like some of the team that I'm I'm running now, I came in just like that. So when was I this? was I was hired before he ever released what was the Ryan Pineda show. I was hired in. This was twenty the end of twenty twenty, early twenty twenty one. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. So you came in as the editor. So I came in as just a podcast editor. My first. First time coming, um, I came in and he handed me a hard drive. It had 10 episodes on it, badly recorded, bad audio. And he was like, I need this next week. We're going to launch next week. Yeah. And I was like, really, bro? Like, you just gave yeah. me three terabytes of footage yeah. that was poorly recorded and filmed. And, yeah. and you want it by ne- a week? Yeah. And my, like, truthfully, I wasn't like this killer editor like that, right? Yeah. Like, I, you know what I mean? I had had jobs editing and yeah. had a couple, I had like four retainers at the time. But I wasn't like crushing out edits like I was just the nicest. I also knew nothing about delegating. So for me, it was like I gotta take all this home and do this myself. Yeah. All right. And that's kind of how I got I got started. And then watching how he ran his businesses, where like he would go, I wanna do this. Hey, you go do uh, like like watching yeah. how he delegated so quickly made me learn that process got too. It. But yeah, I came in as an editor. I, I crushed out those 10 episodes. Um, I sat with him where we kind of like brainstormed launching. And so that was, yep. So I told him about like my previous experience launching podcasts, some of the stuff he agreed with, some of the stuff he didn't. Yeah. Um, but when we launched, we ended up in the top 20 of business podcasts. So it worked. 
um, mm -hmm. you know, between, you know, the group of us that tried to figure it out. And then I just kind of, I, I did that for like three months mm -hmm. where I was just continuously editing the podcast. Um, then I got more involved in the production and mm -hmm. trying to help the set because I was realizing that it's making my back end harder because of how it's being done on set. Mm. right like my edit is taking a lot longer than necessary if we could just fix some lighting things and some audio issues god we could fix it up front then my process on the end will go really fast mm. right and so I, I i started fixing some of that within that three months and then i started live switching right okay so now i was kind of getting an almost done edit at the end of it god all right and just making my again because i was doing it all myself as far yeah. as the editing i was like i can't be up all night like this every single night and trying to do this. I had a newborn. So it was like, I can't mm. do all of this, right? Um, so, yeah. So I, I figured out, and it helped me understand production a lot better. Got it. Um, and what it meant to make sure we get it right. I still got some guys on my team trying to figure that out. Austin. Yeah. Shout out, <laughs> shout out to Austin. I'm just kidding, Austin. I'm serious. <laughs> but um, but that's, 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 that's the, the kind of origin of how I came in, too. Mm -hmm. to what about, stuff. like, were you, you weren't the producer when I did the first podcast with him, right? No. Yeah, yeah, because I now that you brought that up, I was like, "Were you in the room?" And I don't think I wasn't so. Even there. I think it was uh, uh, Sion and, and Kyle. Kyle, yeah, Kyle yep. or whatever his name was. Yeah, yeah, and I don't think anybody was in there switching. I think it was just rolling. Yeah, it was just yeah. rolling. Yeah, badly done. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, it, and it's no, it's no shot to anybody on it being poorly done. It was no, just, you just didn't it's know. new. Yeah, yeah, it's brand new. It's, yeah, it's no new. One knew so what we had to kind of learn it. You know what I mean? Yeah. On, on our own as well. But yeah, no, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't have any say in any of the processes or yeah. systems or any of that there it was no system yeah right it was ryan's gonna film yeah we're gonna you know they were helping with production and filming him and then on the back end we all took those files and we edited yeah no that makes sense so okay so you started off as a podcast editor mm -hmm. and then you're like all right we got to like make it a little bit better and and create a system so the editing doesn't take that long right and then what happened uh so what what essentially happened is ryan was like, okay, it's time now to make this more of a business mm -hmm. where like, it's not just me creating content anymore because there's brand, there's different brands coming on now. He's creating yeah. new things. Yeah, It's becoming more than just the three of us can handle too. Yeah, Right? And so it didn't make sense for him to go get more people in office to try to handle more work rather than just structure it as a business. Yeah. So he took the same type of work organization chart that he had for a wealthy investor that mm -hmm. he had for home and offer, and he's like, tell me what roles are needed for production. Yeah. And so the three of us uh, got together and we were like, okay, here's what it looks like in Hollywood if you were on a movie set as far as roles, right? Now, obviously in content creation, you don't need every single role that's in Hollywood. In content creation, one person can do multiple roles. Mm. right and so it was like let's pull out the roles that we know we need mm -hmm. and so some of those roles were producer um some of those roles were editor videographer photographer um another role that we took from that was uh it's considered a um director mm -hmm. but we consider it you know um a brand director okay right um and then there was creative director all right yeah. those kind of brand those kind of tie together technically he's the brand director mm and the director, mm. right? Because we only go as far as the creator wants to go. Got it. Right? Yeah, you um, can't just tell him, hey, do this, and he's going to do it. It just don't yeah. work like that, yeah. right? Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, and that's, there's some creators out there that will do that. But when you're dealing with high-level entrepreneurs, it's not likely. Because everything that they're, the way their mind works is based on the business. It's not yeah. based on what will work on the platform. Yeah. Um, so that's different. It just depends on who you're working for at that point. Um, but yeah, so we, we, we got all these roles together and then we had to figure out who's going to feel what. Yeah. And that was a little trying time, of course, because somebody has to be in charge. Yeah. All right. Ryan is the leader, the director of it, but somebody has to be that producer role was an individual that is going to make sure everybody's where they're supposed to be and things are getting accomplished. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, it's like management. It's management, COO yeah. type of yeah. type of role. Yeah. All right. And so that, that, that's kind of how that had to work. Um, and so because I was new, he didn't feel comfortable offering it to me right away. Yeah. And so he went to his the guy that he hired first and was like, hey, do you want this? He didn't want it. Mm -hmm. right? It wasn't something that he was interested in. And he kind of knew that, but he wanted to offer it. Mm -hmm. Right. This is, again, being a good leader um, because it could have caused problems between all of us if it yeah. would have went just Justin's in charge. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. It could have been crazy. 
Um, and then he went to the second person that he had hired who was a part of the team. Mm-hmm. And for whatever reason, those negotiations didn't work. Mm-hmm. What was beneficial for me mm-hmm. is that I knew what was said in those negotiations. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, because I'm I, I'm not the type of individual that will backdoor someone or try yeah. to undercut someone. I believe like in people setting their own valued price mm-hmm. and sticking to that. Yeah. And so I don't try to do that in any situation, right? Like if the job's not for me, it's just not for me. Yeah. And so I sat back and I was just like, all right, we'll see what happens out of all this. I'll fall in line where need be. Yeah. And then um, he called me and was like, hey, uh, you know, the guys didn't necessarily want this role. I want to offer it to you. Yeah. Me being who I am, I immediately hit them because I got to work with these dudes every day. Yeah. I'm like, look, y'all, he's offering this. I'm like, I got a whole family over here. So if y'all don't want it, I'd rather it not be somebody on the outside coming in and telling us how yeah. this should work. I'd rather it be one of us. Oh, you're super nice. And so I'm like, let's make sure that we're gonna be okay and this is gonna flow. Yeah, I if, would've been like, I would've just took the role. Yeah, and I, I mean, some people would. Yeah. I mean, for for me though, it wasn't. I don't. I don't run like my life's not based on the money or based on. Yeah. Because I know God's got me. Like the opportunity is gonna come no matter what. If it uh-huh. wasn't here, it would've been somewhere else. Yeah. Right, and so I wasn't necessarily concerned with that. I was more concerned with being happy at work, mm. because that's what I had prayed for. <laughs> I, I had you come from to toxic jobs, bro. I hate God, like I when know. you hate getting up in the morning and going somewhere. It's just not, it's not good in any yeah, kind yeah, of way. It yeah. it impacts every other aspect of life. Hundred percent. And so I was like, if I got to come in here and fight with them to do what I'm asking, then I don't want this, right? But they were cool with it. You know, these are stand up dudes, and so it was like, all right, here we go. I took it on the roll, and then the, the ball's kind of been rolling ever since. How was, uh, and then I do want to talk about the business, but yeah. how was Ryan as a creator, like in the beginning <laughs> to like now? Uh, it took a little time for Ryan. Ryan as a creator early on was 100% in control. Okay. He was like, we're going to do this, like down to the point to where like we would be filming things, and he would be like, you should stand over here. Yeah. And I'm like, bro, you're not looking at what I'm looking at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't tell me where to stand. Yeah, yeah. Right? And so we had to get to a point where we would be like, no, nah, Ryan, this is cool. Just go ahead. Yeah. Right? And it took a little time because obviously he's in charge, right? Like yeah, it's yeah. Our, our whole you know livelihood is based on him liking what we're doing. Yeah. And so it, it, it took a little time for us to develop that relationship to where I could be like, no, you should, you should come here, not yeah. me doing what you think you're knowing yeah. and yeah. seeing, right? So- that has to develop, right? And and I just I encourage anybody that's in those shoes to to take the time to develop that relationship because when you do, you create better videos. Oh, 100%. You create better products, right? 100%. Like I've been working your, on your trust for a year now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Like yeah. Brian, I'm telling you, yeah. I know what you're thinking. Yeah, yeah. Right? But you have to view it from the, the viewer, not from what you like. I know. Right? And that I think every creator has to learn that. Yeah, right. and it's funny because like I had an editor in in California that I I liked a lot, and then I started like like at first I didn't trust him, but I liked him. Right, I liked his edits. Right, but then once I started to trust him, that's when I started to go viral on Instagram. To see and results. it wasn't just because of him; it was just like more comfortable. Yep. We kind of could go back and forth on stuff. We would look at the content together, and we're like, "All right, well, you know." If it's brighter, for some reason, they're doing better. Okay, let's just try to go really bright. Okay. For some reason, when I was doing videos outside for a while, they were doing great. So, yeah. like, fuck it. We're we outside every park. time. Yeah, I'm at the park <laughs> shooting videos for kids, yeah. kids playing uh, on the side and stuff. Yeah. And, um, yeah. And then, like, I uh, – like, the trust and the respect has to be there. Because yep. then, like, if it's not, then – I just it just doesn't go as well. Yeah, and it, it just you think about it. You're spending a lot of time, yeah, with that individual. Yep, and they're also intaking a lot of information that you're giving. Yep, right. And so again, if it, it all goes back to like buying in on the brand, 100. percent Right. Like one thing I did when I decided to to be like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to leave my job uh-huh. and take a chance on this. Yeah. It was like if you're going to do that, you have to buy into the brand. You have to believe what the individual is offering. The first year, I never even saw you. I only saw your face on stuff. Yeah, like you weren't in, like you weren't around. So yeah, like I had, office, I, yeah. I didn't know who. Like I had no idea what your voice sounded like. Yeah. I, I just know this guy's in charge, and I never see him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, but I was like, okay, 
once he was like, okay, we're gonna start creating content for a wealthy investor. Yeah. I'm like, now I need to get to know more, and that's the t- that's what I do, right? Like yeah. when you're like, how, you know all this stuff about content, it's because I I try to study the individuals mm-hmm. that are in my like that are in my space because yeah. in in the information that I know, I could be like, no, we probably shouldn't do that because they did that and it didn't work, mm-hmm. or we probably should do this because they did it and it and it, and it worked. Yeah. Right. And so it's like understanding those things. Mm-hmm. It's just hours put in, right? Yeah. And, and it's like sports, right? Yeah. Like Steph doesn't shoot the way Steph does because he's just gifted. No. Steph shoot because of the hours and the amount of shots that he got up, right? Yeah. Like you can't, you know what I mean? The repetition in that is what is, is why he is who he is. And so if you do that consistently, you'll start to see that. And so with Ryan specifically, early on, I just had to gain the trust. Yeah. Then once we gain the trust, he falls back on everything production now. He's like, mm-hmm. I just want to show up. Yeah. Right. Okay. Now you want to show up? Like we had a conversation yesterday, and I'm I'm talking about how he's doing his podcast, how he's asking some of his questions, where some other questions should go, like the order in which you should talk about them. Right. Mm-hmm. Like we're discussing that. Mm-hmm. Two, three years ago, he's not hearing me. Yeah. Now he's like, okay, right. Like, yeah. Uh, and so it's like you know, understanding those type of things it changes the creator through time on on yeah. how the relationship is based. What about like? Because I do want to talk about business before we wrap up, but yeah. w- talk to me about there's two different philosophies. Okay. There's uh, low volume, higher quality, quality, and then there's high volume and you maybe less quality. Yeah. But some people will say, yeah, we just try to maintain the quality. Right. But like, talk to me about those two type of philosophies. Yeah. So any philosophy in content uh-huh. is... We're, it's the wild wild west. There's yeah. not there's not real yeah. philosophy, right? There's nothing that is I there, can say. No? I no. feel like there is. There's nothing like there that is. I can say will for sure work for you. For me, yeah, no, I yeah. can't do that. Yeah, right? but there's two different types of creators. There's, there's different creators, right? And so here's what I'll say. Under from my understanding, it's all based on where you're at in your journey, mm-hmm. right? So if you're a creator that's just getting started quality shouldn't necessarily be your main focus because mm-hmm. the hardest part for beginner creators is staying consistent. Yeah. Right. Somebody that posts once a day, that's new. That's hard. Right. It's hard even when you're experienced, it, but it's, it's, a, it's a difficult thing to do. Right. Like yeah, it's yeah, hard yeah. to do. And so when you're talking quantity, quantity and, and for me and, and for the three years that I've been in, it now means six to seven a day. Damn. Right. Are That's you talking what, about? But you're, are you talking about platforms like one post on six to seven platforms? No. Or are you talking about six no. Pieces of six to seven times. Yeah, like bro. we've gotten to a point where we've posted seven times on Ryan's Instagram in a day. Yeah, that's continuously. Wild. How much? How many are you guys posting right now? I was actually thinking we're about we're that. posting four. Oh. And then we're gonna go back to we're gonna dial back to three here at the start of the year. Dang. I was wondering, yeah, because I haven't been seeing his stuff as much. I was like, yeah, I wonder if he's posting. Like we're gonna that. dial back and go quality. Mm-hmm. Right, so and that's what I'm saying. Like his journey has has fluctuated through the years, right? Like, yeah. there's times where we're like, because a lot of it is just testing, like seeing seeing what works, right? And a lot of and a lot of, for a lot of these platforms, it takes months to understand if something worked or not. Yeah. So for you know three months, we'll test doing uh, quantity, and we're posting five to six times a day. Yeah. And then as we start to see our charts either go up or down yeah. or stay the same, yeah, we'll dial back. Yeah. Or we'll ramp up, right? Like it just depends on paying attention to those analytics and understanding what the platform is is wanting from us, right? Like my goal always is for the platform to do the work. I don't want to always be trying to beat the platform and like you know how you got creators that just like I gotta go viral, I gotta go viral. They they they're selling the view. Yeah. Right? Because of how the image that it perceives. That's not our goal because our goal is to get people in here again and be a part of our community. It's the business side of it, mm-hmm. right? And so without – I'd rather have an individual come in that has the capacity to be able to be a part of our programs and join mm-hmm. versus the individual that comes in because he's a fan and just likes viewing it, mm. right? Like your your heart, I love it. I appreciate it. But it doesn't mean as much if you don't click the link and try to get in a program. Yeah, Right, that's where the value is, and so I focus more on that, and that's why we are. That's why we move things around. So it may be five to six in three months, and in three months from now, it may be three. What do you think I should do? <laughs> so here's what I here's what I think. I think right now you're you're outputting one a day. Yeah. Right. Whether Most it's, of the time. Yeah. Whether it's podcast, 
I think going back to what we said at the beginning, I think you need to implement some of your personal content into the branded content. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Because you are the brand, essentially. Right? As of now, you've been operating as the Brian DeVilla. Yeah. Almost separately from Brian DeVilla. Wealthy Investor. Oh, okay. Right? Because I thought you were going to say the Brian DeVilla because I feel like my Instagram. It's not you. It's not me. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like, I work. don't know how many people on your Instagram, and they're gonna, this is something they're going to learn right now. Yeah. I don't know how many of them know that you can rap every Drake song. <laughs> right? Yeah. But if I get that about you, there's a lot of Drake fans. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah. that's so, like, they need that, that from you. But not only they need it from the Brian DeVille, but Wealthy Investor needs it as well. Yeah. Right? Like, I want to connect to you personally, right? Like, yeah. I get to see when, when Ryan goes and buys a Hummer and when his kids have a big birthday party yeah, yeah, and yeah. when Mindy comes on the podcast and talks, right? Yeah. Like, I get to see all of that because that's just a part of him and he's the brand. Ryan Pineda is, is a brand. brand. Yeah. Right now, your wealthy investor is the brand and the Brian DeVilla is almost like the co-host to that brand, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't get all of it. I only get a piece of it. Oh. Right, like it used to be, like think about Hollywood, right? Yeah, it, the mystique was what was valuable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know anything about Denzel Washington's personal life. No, we didn't hear any. Like, right, like I didn't know any of that. Yeah, if that was today, it wouldn't work. Mm, Actors now, you got to know what's going on, right? God, athletes, man. we know. I can tell you, LeBron's day to day almost. Yeah. Because he exposes it, right? Like, of course, there's things that he's not sharing. Yeah. But a lot of it, like, I know his kids' names. I know where they go to school. I know if they won last night. I know his picks for football on Sunday. Like, mm. I know all those things about LeBron because he posted. Yeah. And that is a part of his brand, right? Yeah. So there's people that aren't fans of basketball that are fans of LeBron. Yeah. Just like people won't be fans of investing, real estate investing, but they're fans of Brian. That'd be interesting. Yeah. Yeah, you know what? Again, you're you're really like shifting my mindset because I was always very like just just like I don't even post my kids on my Instagram. If you look at my Instagram, I don't post my kids. Yeah, I know. Like because I'm just like, ah, I don't I don't care. And I don't you got the most them. adorable kids too. Like I know. I know. <laughs> and, and I and I, I I'm trying to get better at that too because I was private like that. Yeah. Right? And and because now obviously we I'm creating, I have to start doing that. But like I posted my like one of the things my son asked for Christmas was a recliner. Yeah. And I posted about it on my story. I was like, this is my six year old. This is what he asked for for Christmas. He didn't ask for one toy. He asked for like a gold chain, a watch, <laughs> and this recliner. Right. Yeah. yeah. And so I posted about it on Instagram and my views doubled mm. on my story. Mm. And I was like, wow, like people actually care. Are, yeah, yeah. Right. Like, and the platform is noticing it and pushing it out to people, yeah. right? So it's like, wow, so, okay, so it's not that I'm going to use my son for exposure, but it's like it may not just be about my son. It's just that they're seeing more of my life. Yeah. Maybe they just happen to see what my living room looks like and like, oh, I got that plant. Uh, like, yeah. You know what I mean? Like stuff like yeah, that is what – Yeah, to it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you know, it's, it's, it's really psychology when it comes to that, but yeah. that is a big part of what you should start to consider doing yeah. as you're trying to grow the Brian DeVilla along yeah. with Wealthy Investor. Yeah, I'm going to start posting some golf stuff too because yeah. I freaking – I'm pretty good at golf. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. you should. <laughs> you should. What, what you missed out on is not yeah. posting your journey from start to now. I still but, got it. I recorded a lot of it. But pick up now and post your journey as you get better and better, right? I'm Ryan made a whole – his first reel about golf was about him wanting to get good enough to compete. Mm. And now you're watching his journey to get yeah. good enough to Ryan, compete. Ryan needs to start competing. I feel like he's a little You think he's – uh, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm like, that's, I, I've thought about that. I was, okay. like, I was like, why don't you compete? And he's like, oh, because – these guys, they'll beat you. Yeah. They'll beat him. Cause, yeah. And cause, I think a I think a big thing now is like he he doesn't necessarily spend the amount of time that those competitors can put in. Yeah. He can't put in that time yet. Yeah. Now, it's nothing to say that in, in three months he can not yeah. do it, right, put in yeah. the time. But he wants to get on that celebrity golf circuit, and I think he yeah. will. I think he truly will. Oh, man, I want to talk about more content stuff. Like, what do you think? Do you know Good Good Golf? You don't even know how. No, I'm not a golfer. Bro, look up Good Good Golf. There is a girl that I follow that golf, so Samantha something. Uh, I don't watch women's she golf. Makes, she makes good content, though. Yeah, That's I, why I followed her, because oh, of the okay. content. But, <laughs> kidding. I mean, women's golf. I don't watch great. women's sports. Yeah, yeah, but um, <laughs> Good Good Golf. Look it up. 
Okay. And then let me know what you think about it. Okay. So there's Good Good Golf. The owner of Good Good Golf has another channel. It's called GM Golf. Mm -hmm. uh, I think his name is Garrett. There's Garrett and Grant. Those are like the That's two the big guys. Um, I'm very interested to see what their channels are like worth. Yeah. Because they're young guys. They have like a million subs. They are now sponsored by Callaway. Okay. Yeah. So they have golf balls with Callaway. They wow. their swag is with Callaway. Like all their stuff is with Callaway. Yeah. And I'm like, I wonder what these brands are worth because, you know, with golf, golf is so expensive and it's you know it's it's not an, uh, a cheap sport. Yeah. So with I'm them, sure those I'm sure those deals are pretty good. Yeah. I'm sure they are. Like you know, because again. It's the right type of attention. Yeah. Right. Has anything that they that you've seen from them on their content make you want to go get? A hundred percent. Right. And that's yeah. that tells you the value. Yeah. Right? Like because there's a lot of I see sponsorships all the time. Yeah. And it's not necessarily like doesn't align or something. Yeah, like that. it doesn't yeah. necessarily like manscape or yeah, or like, I, like it's like a I, random I, thing. I see manscape all the time. I've never bought it. Yeah, me neither. Right. Like but it, the good good shirts are fresh i'm like okay i need that shirt exactly so I can play better hopefully so if they're if they're doing something <laughs> and it's actually making people like because i think that at the end of the day that's what they track right like yeah. every deal that i've ever been a part of with ryan that is from an outside company yeah they always want to know how many people buy a product from yeah. a sponsorship yeah yeah, yeah, yeah and then those numbers tell you like what the real value is and yeah. so at some point you should be able to set your own price on it 100 and, and understand it okay so let's transition to business mm -hmm. so how much money does Ryan make a year from social media? That's hard to say, man. Because it, you know, me being on this side, yeah, I think it's most of it. <laughs> I thought you would say all of it. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, um, I, I, I believe that simply because this thing is has grown because of what he's been able to do on the platform. Hundred percent. Right, and so whether or not. You know, you, you think back in where there's a sales team and there's all these other things that mm -hmm. play a part to yeah. actually collecting the money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It all started with the influence. 100%. And, and so I can't say for sure how much money, but he told me myself, like in my bio, you'll see like uh, has helped the company earn over $50 million Ooh. in sales. Yeah. Right. Which is probably true because yeah. if you looked at produced hours of time and videos and mm -hmm. views versus how much has been made off oh, of just yeah. that, yeah. it's probably true. Yeah. yeah, yeah right. Yeah. And so when he said it, I kind of like, you know, all right. All right. Like, okay, all, right yeah. all right. Let me ask for a raise. Yeah. <laughs> but no. Like, uh, I should get 1%. <laughs> yeah. For real. <laughs> but uh, all jokes. But it's just, it's, um, it's one of those things where like a lot of it has come from the building, the influence. And I think that's also why he was so encouraging of building other people in the network, like yeah. yourself, Javi, myself, yeah. And, yeah. and Chris, right? Like it was because he, once you see what it can do for you and your branding, yeah. if you start doing that for your top guys and everybody around you, you'll start to see that, yeah. you know, it, the whole, everybody benefits at 100%. that point. And so, What about like, so give me five tips if someone wants to make money on social media. Oh, five tips. So let's start with just the easiest way to do it, right? Mm -hmm. The easiest way to make money. Affiliate. Okay. Start there immediately. Like you can affiliate right now for Wealthy Creator. Got it. You join the program, you immediately can become an affiliate and sell Wealthy Creator to other individuals and make money from your percentage on that. Yeah. That works for every almost every company, like major company and good yeah. company has that. Yeah. Right? So like, uh, I don't know, does this have a mic plate on it? Nope. So we have mic plates on most of our microphones that are branded. I got to get you yours. Yeah. But it will say either wealthy investor or you can go to micplates.com and a link in the bio right now. I am an affiliate for them. Yeah. Right. And you could buy your mic plates for your sure uh, microphones that shows your brand. Yeah. What's cool about that is that I don't have to do anything but promote it. Mm -hmm. Right. And so making content about it is the easiest piece. Yeah. And whatever comes from that, it just comes from it. Like I don't, I'm not betting on a bunch of people doing it. I'm not hoping for you know mm -hmm. what I mean? But if I if I get a little check from them, it's cool. I, I immediately start to monetize my content. Yeah. Right. And so that's the number one, like the first and the easiest way is affiliating. Uh huh. Uh, another way to monetize right away is to get sponsorships. You talking about it right now with, uh, -huh. uh you know, your good. golf guys. So like yeah. you can, you can, um, you can something like that. Once you have grown enough influence and a company wants to partner with you on something, mm -hmm. it's an easy way to to kind of again collect a check for creating. Yeah, right? and it, it's funny too because like 
early on, like I had never really dealt with that negotiation. Mm -hmm. And then with Ryan, I had to do it a little bit because we didn't necessarily have a salesperson for that. And in the communication, I'm like, they were sending over what the deliverables would be. I'm like, this don't make sense. Like, why would he do all of this for 10 yeah. grand? All right. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. when he could promote his own brand for yeah, and get way more. And then I looked at it from a different lens and I was like, oh no, you need to, you need to counter, right? Like yeah. you need to say, no, 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 we're not doing all of this for this, but we'll do these pieces. Yeah. Right. And that's how as you grow influence, you can control that. Early on, it's like take what you can get. Right. Yeah. Like if somebody's willing to even just send you a bunch of golf attire yeah. for free. I'll for you it. to make a video, yeah, yeah. like you take me it. Golf attire, guys. Yeah, come on, hook my guy <laughs> up, man. Ball. Hook him up, right? So like that's just you know, so that's another way of of kind of monetizing and, and creating in that aspect. Um, so you got affiliates, you got sponsorships, um, call you, to actions. You, you got need your to do call to actions. Your CDAs for sure, right? Yeah. That, that that should be number one. Yeah, yeah. That, I mean, and and I think too, but you gotta have you gotta start. You got to have good content. You don't want all your content to be some type of call to action. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? And if it is, it should be a a, a, a light call to action where it's just like follow for more. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. Right? Because don't, you don't want to always come off like you're selling something either. 100%. Um, but your call to action should kind of generate you enough kind of attention to where they actually take the action. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so make sure that the content is good to go with it. But yeah, and, and you can call to action to whatever you have to offer, right? Mm -hmm. Like I've done it for coaching calls, like one-on-one -on -one calls that I've done for people. Yeah. Where I'm like, hey man, I, I just talked to this individual and I and we went over this and his 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 following just went up from two K to twenty K mm -hmm. in within five calls. Yeah. Right? True story. But I was like, this is it, it has happened. And so I'm like, if you want to get a one-on-one -on -one call with me, shoot me a DM and a content yeah. and we'll get to it. Right. Like those type of call to actions are valuable if you have something to offer. Yeah. Right. Just make sure your offer is good at the end of the day. Yeah. Right. And make sure it's something that's real. Um, so that's 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 the a third one, right? Yeah. Like you got affiliates, you got sponsorships, you got call to actions in your in your posting. Um then YouTube pays you guys, right? So I was gonna say that next. The fourth one is any platform that's willing to pay, right? Yeah. Like some like YouTube pays you, but you also can do lives when people can donate. Or like mm -hmm. I remember the first time we did or the first few times we did Wealthy Wednesday, which was a live that we did on Wednesdays with yeah. Ryan. And he starts seeing like a thing pop up that said ten dollars on the on the chat. Yeah. And he thought people were requesting money from him. <laughs> but people were actually sending him money every time he dropped a value gym. Interesting. Right? Like, and they were just like, hey, here's, you know, it's just a donation. Do you have your phone on you? I do. How much did Ryan make from YouTube this year? Let's check here. From yeah. YouTube this year so far? Yeah. Let's see. Year to date. How much did YouTube pay Ryan? And I want to get paid just as much. Just next as year, much so next year. Me. Okay. So for 2023, he made $133,000. A little bit over $133,000. Damn. Okay, that's a lot. That's Good. more than I thought it was going to be. I it was gonna Especially be like for him not to be focused on it. Yeah. Right? Like, it's just podcasts. Yeah. It's not like we did. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so the majority of our year was just podcasts. And then I, I'll show you this chart, and we'll even screenshot it and, and, and add it in on the episode. But if you look, when the chart goes up at the end, yeah. That's when podcasting, we went all in on podcast. Oh. Right. So this is for the doubters that say that whatever I'm saying isn't real. Like yeah. podcasting is it, right? Yeah, like, yeah. It's less work for him to do. He gets yeah. to, to, to network and create these relationships and the dollars go up on that. Yeah. Um, and a lot of that is because, again, you're making a longer episode. Yeah. So I've been encouraging even some of the one-on-ones I have that are doing, still doing YouTube videos, those 12 to 15 minute videos. Yeah. Is to figure out how to make a compilation just to make a longer one. Yeah. All right. Okay. And make a longer video, just like a podcast and, and yeah. see the benefit of that. So yeah, he's done, he's done well. And that's just one channel, right? We mm -hmm. got other channels that are doing pretty good too. Yeah. Um, I guess lastly, I want to ask you, what are your goals in social media? Well, that's a good question. Uh, I've been, I mean, that's been like the last couple of weeks trying to figure out exactly where I want, what I want to aim for. Cause it's funny. I had a goal of reaching 500 subscribers on wealthy creators page. Mm -hmm. uh, we started it towards like we launched in October. And so I wanted to get to 500 by the end of the year or by Christmas. I was okay. like, that's going to be my Christmas gift to myself is to get yeah. that to 500. I got to 600. Dang! So I was like, let's go. Right? <laughs> um, and so like, and now like Jeff, one of the guys that works with me at creator just, Came in and was like, "All right, man, let's get to seven hundred by New Year's." Okay, and so I was like, "All right, we'll see what happens." Yeah. Right, but it, my goal for myself truly um, is to continue just growing influence 
in a way that uh, I can create that authority in this creative space. Yeah. Right. Like I want to, I want people to understand that he's not just talking, right? Like it's mm -hmm. real. Right. Yeah. And that's hard to do when you don't put out content. Yeah. I know other individuals that are in this space that are coaches and, and strategists and things like that. Mm -hmm. They put out content for years now. Mm -hmm. And so the authority kind of comes with it. Right, because 100%. people can you people, can see it. People yeah. can find them, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's where I'm at, right? Like mm -hmm. I, 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 I've allotted some authority because of my connection to Ryan and what we've been able to do. Mm -hmm. Now it's just show and tell. Hundred percent. Right. Um. So that's one goal, and then I'm going to continue to work on communication, mm -hmm. hosting podcasts. Um. I told Ryan one of my things this year is wanting to get on stages. Mm -hmm. Right. I want to develop that skill and be able to speak in front of people. So yeah. I will be speaking at the WealthCon um, if anybody's coming. And, but I also I also want to do other people's stages. Right. Like, okay. I want to get not just our community, but I want to spread you know the information on our community on other people's stages as yeah. well. Um, so that's a goal of mine. Right. I, I think I caught that bug from just being backstage all the time and watching people do it, mm -hmm. seeing some people come prepared and ready, and then some people wing it. Yeah. Seeing some people like, and, and all of it's good, but it's yeah. just like, man, this is a real art. Like, this is I a know. real art. Being able to move. Too, yeah, we are. <laughs> we both, we both got to get our presentation together, but being, having, watching people develop, you know, and be able to move a room. Yeah. Like, I'm fascinated by it. Like, I'm extremely fascinated we gotta by it. We got to practice then. We got to practice for WealthCon. Because yeah. it's coming up and I'm just like, damn, dude. Like, I don't even know what I want to talk about yet. I have an idea. Yeah. But I don't know. And I got to, it's almost like a paper where you're like, damn, I got to write this damn paper, but I don't want to start. That's exactly what it's like. Yeah. It's like, it's like, like Ryan was writing his during Christmas. Ryan's wild. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, Ryan's crazy. Ryan's so, a robot. Yeah. People, people have no idea. They don't know. They don't know. Yeah. So, like, and, but that challenged me too. So, it made me start mine. Okay, that's. I cool. was like, all right, I'm gonna get to it. How, how many pages you got? Uh, so so far I got like eight slides. <laughs> first three are the the first seven. First three are, are just my story. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, so like you know, but it, it truthfully, it's not because it's been something I've been thinking about for mm -hmm. the last six months or so. Yeah. It's I got a lot that I want to say that I got to figure out how to fit into 25 minutes. I know. Just go uh, over. I was thinking about that. Too. I was like, I just, might just go over. Just get the clock like, down yeah, there. Just yeah. do a Kanye hand. Just yeah, yeah. be in there for an hour and a half. People are like, Damn. You have to come get me off stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no. Uh, Chris, so. you pulled me off. You are fired, brother. <laughs> <laughs> you got all control. Yeah, yeah. yeah, no, seriously, though. Like, it's. I got so much. Like, I just want to help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Like, that's really what I enjoy is, like, yeah. watching people grow, especially because there's some people that come in and you could, they're really timid. They're shy. They don't necessarily want to get on camera. Yeah. They kind of just barely want to shake your hand and talk yeah. to you. And then when they find it, it finally clicks for them to do content. Mm -hmm. And then I see them at, in three months at the next WealthCon. Yeah. And they got the videographer following them. Their oh, chest yeah. is out. They're talking real clear. Yeah, and I'm yeah, like, yeah. okay, yeah. Like, you can see the confidence building. 100%. I enjoy that. I really enjoy that because yeah. it, I know that they're making somebody else's life better, too. Yeah. Right. And so if you could just continue to grow community, like that's mm -hmm. that's always a goal. I need everybody that's gonna see this mm -hmm. to go follow creator. Go follow creator. Go to wealthy subscribe creator. Subscribe to this channel. Subscribe, There's follow gonna be me. Five CTAs. Yeah, I know. Subscribe to this channel, like this video, because our coach told us that it needs engagement. Mm -hmm. Leave a comment. Go subscribe to Wealthy Creator. Go subscribe or follow uh Justin Barry's Instagram. What's your Instagram? Justin Barry. Justin Barry. Easy. What else? And, go follow me on Instagram, the Brian Davila. Yeah, and consider joining the Wealthy Creator community. And go to the description if you want us to teach you social media and you want to learn how to grow your influence, like me, Justin, Ryan. Join Wealthy Creator. Let me know if you actually joined from this video. What else? That's it. That's it. That's it. All right. If you can do it, all of those things, you're gonna win. You're on. You're on my team. All right. <laughs> you're gonna win. Great podcast, guys. Awesome. All right. Peace. peace.